Hello, everybody, and welcome to the El Capitan Theater. My name is Ryan, and I'm part of the operations team here. Is it anyone's first time at the El Capitan tonight? We are so happy to especially welcome you. We know this won't be your last time. We have some great films coming up, not just this amazing 30th anniversary screening of Homeward Bound. Are you guys excited for that? As are we, anytime we can pull something out of the Disney library and show it here at the El Capitan, it makes us very excited. So again, we're so happy to have you here. A couple little notes, if for some reason we need to evacuate the theater, our emergency exits are located on both your right and left. You'll see those exit signs in the orchestra and up there in the balcony level. Or of course, you can just exit the way you came in through the front doors. You can certainly use your cell phones to record or take pictures anytime during the panel that we're about to see. But please, once the movie starts, please silence and put away those cell phones. The movie is on the big screen, not on your little screen. So we want you to enjoy that movie. And for the comfort and pleasure of everyone else, please put those away once the movie begins. Now, before the movie starts, we do have an amazing panel for you. And to host that panel, I would like to welcome Jonathan London, who is the host of the Geekscape podcast. So let's bring him out and he'll Hello take everybody. it over from here. Hello, how's, it, how's everybody doing? Y'all good? All right, let me just ask you one quick question before we start our panel. How many of y'all have seen this movie before? Uh, and how many of you are seeing it for the very first time? Okay, I'm gonna ask the other half of you to not spoil it for that half of you, but uh, what do you say uh, we get to the panel? These are people who have made the movie. We got some of the cast and crew here to talk to you for about 30 minutes before the movie starts. I'm excited to introduce them. Um, first off, we've got the producer of the film, Jeffrey Chernoff is here. You can't make a film without a director. And we've got Dwayne Dunham, who directed the original film. Those of you who have seen the movie will recognize this next actor. Sorry. It's Robert Hayes. He played Bob. <laughs> Followed by the man who put this event together. In the film, he played Peter, my good friend, Ben Stahl. And she played his sister in the movie, Hope. This is Veronica Lauren Sawyer. And finally, you gotta round out the kids. We got our Jamie, Kevin Chevalier. Come on out here, Kev. And no offense to the human, animal, uh, human actors, but uh, Look at these three actors up here on stage. Uh, let's meet the team responsible for their performances. These are lead animal trainer Joe Camp and Tammy Maples. Come on out. Woo. And folks, backstage, some of them have not seen each other since the production wrapped. Is that correct? That is correct. Wow. Um, well, Dwayne, let, let's start with you. I think they are all on. I think they're. Boom. Is this on? We got you. We got you. Um, so, Trusty. Dwayne. Um, they turned yours off, Bob. It was your job to uh, to direct the film. Um, talk about your journey to the film. Well, it's a, been a long one, <laughs> um, and more amazing that we're all here celebrating this movie that uh, we did 30 years ago, and it's quite an honor to be here and have the whole, not whole cast and crew, but so many. And uh, the memory of the animals, though, is quite different when I see them on this screen. I have very mixed emotions about the whole thing, Joe. <laughs> but I'll tell you very quickly how this happened. I was uh, looking for my first, I'd done some television, looking for my first feature directing job. And Disney gave me a script. And I liked the script, and it was a story and took place in Harlem in 1965, and it was an R&B group, some uh, black female singers. And I kept going one, one meeting after another, and I kept saying, you know, I'm, I'm going on a trip. I'm, I have a family obligation up in Oregon, Black Butte Ranch, and I got to 
So they forced my meetings and I went in and this one executive, probably the last one in line that could green light me, uh, said to me, why do you want to do this movie? And I just gave him the truth. I said, well, the real question is, I said, I'm a storyteller. I could do this movie, but why would you want me to do this movie? And he says, what do you mean? I said, look, I'm a guy from Southern California. I know the beach and this is, this is Harlem. This is R&B. I said, I can do it, but why? And he put his pencil down and I thought, okay. And he, and he says to me, he looks right at me and he says, so what kind of story do you want to do? And I said, I want to do a story of a kid who grows up on this farm. And every day he walks to that far fence and he looks out and he looks back. And one day he goes and he jumps the fence. The guy now stands up and leaves the room. And I'm thinking, what an idiot. You've just talked yourself out of a job. <laughs> he came back. He dropped this script on my lap. And he said, you've got to read this right away and call me in the morning. And it was this script. It was Homeward Bound. It was called An Incredible Journey at the time. And I read it. And uh, it happened immediately. And I was on a plane that afternoon, believe it or not, to Black Butte Ranch up in Oregon. And that's where we were going to set up our operations in Black Butte Ranch. <laughs> so I said, I'll start scouting tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm on vacation. Still on vacation, Bob. Well, that's what this business is, is a vacation. He just wanted to write off his vacation, didn't you? Um, how about you? Uh, so Bob, what was your path to it, Robert? Uh, my manager, Fran Saperstein, uh, had come across the script and uh, told my agent, who didn't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> really good agent. <laughs> Schmeagel, Flegel, and Legal, I think, was the agency. I don't know. But um, so uh, that was it. We started and had meetings, and, and I loved the script. The story was wonderful, and, uh, and that's, that's how it ha basically how it happened. And Bench? Yeah, I, I had already been working as a, as a child actor for about two or three years. Um, the interesting thing about this project is I had done all my auditions on tape, and tape was kind of a new thing for auditions and, and such. You used, to, you used to have to go in. Now it's only tape. Um, but I, I had done three tapes, and then some time had gone by, and then all of a sudden I got the job, and it was like about two or three days later, I was flying up to Oregon where we shot the film. And I distinctly remember like being, I, I met Veronica the first night we were there. And then the next day we're in the van to go meet the animals, meet the, the rest of the cast. And they dropped us off in the PA and the van was like, go on, uh, the director's up there waiting for you. And I said, I say, who's the director? <laughs> Because I had never met Dwayne, I think, until that day. It was all on tape. And, and so that was my journey, auditioning. And then uh, we got cast, and I'm so grateful, grateful for them casting me. In the film. Any actors out there who've had to audition on Skype for the last two years are saying the same thing. They're like, yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah. It's all remote. Um, Veronica, did you have a similar story? Yeah, I wish, I, I mean, listening to you recall it, I wish that I had that level of memory around it. I, I mean, I remember being there, and I remember so much time on set, and I remember so much of the crew and my time with the animals. We were just talking about that. It was so special, some really significant moments. But the leading up to, I have, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Kev, you were a, like a baby. How old were you when you made this movie? Yeah, I had turned six the uh, second day of production. So, <laughs> like uh, Veronica, my memory is a little... Apache in this Do y'all remember doing anything for Kev's birthday or did they do anything for your birthday? The, 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 the story was, um, well, uh, we were second day in the park. Uh, we were in a park doing a uh, kind of a family photo shoot. And uh, it was like well, we were all meeting each other, uh, meet and greet. Some background photos were being taken. And uh, there was a birthday cake in the shape of a, a dog bone. <laughs> and, and as a six-year-old, I'm thinking, oh, it's a birthday cake. You know, celebrate my birthday. Oh, okay, kind of cool. <laughs> um, turns out it was for a, like a background uh, family photo in the house of a dog's birthday. <laughs> uh, family celebration. 
for the dog. <laughs> it, it, what was it made of, Dwayne? I'm sorry. It wasn't edible, was it? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. trying to sedate me at that time. <laughs> <laughs> we were about ready to shoot. <laughs> it's like a scary time with these animals. <laughs> and so that's the day that you all shot, like whenever you make a movie and you got the family, you got to have family photos in the house and give them a, a backstory. And that was kind of the way that you all all met. Where the, and the animals were there. Uh, Joe and, and Tammy, was that, a, was that like the warm up for getting the animal actors Familiar with the with the actors? Yes, it was. Yes, um, that that was the first day we we'd spent just introducing the animals and um, and the kids and getting them comfortable with each other and and there were there were multiples so you know of the animals of the animals yeah. not not of the children <laughs> not of the children. <laughs> so we Jeff, yes, just, oh, go ahead. And the best thing, it gave Dwayne a chance to meet some of the animals. And he wasn't so sure when he saw Ben, but uh, <laughs> the dog. He was <laughs> patient with us. <laughs> so, Jeffrey, you've got to put the whole thing together as a producer. Uh, what are some of the challenges of working with live animals and, and also working with kids? No offense, guys, but y'all are, you know, they always tell you, don't work with live animals, don't work with kids, right? That's the advice they give filmmakers. Yes, and don't go on the water. And uh, we, we were close, <laughs> but uh, we stayed away from going on the water. Um, you have to have a lot of patience. And this is how we come to work in the morning and just understand that you know, the animals feel the energy, the actors feel the energy, um, and trying to get them in sync you know, at the beginning of the day is the biggest challenge. Um, and as the day progresses, we shot in the summer, it got warmer, and as it gets warmer, you know, the animals tend to not want to work as much. And then as the day progresses, the more they get their treats, the less hungry they are, and the less they want to perform. And they get tired. They get tired, just like regular, you know, real human actors. So um, it became a, a job that was very difficult initially to get the right rhythm, to get everybody to understand this. And uh, Joe Camp, really folks, this movie is not a movie without Joe Camp and his talented team of trainers that came to do this movie. Um, for those of you who um, have maybe saw this movie when it was released 30 years ago, Honestly, this was groundbreaking stuff. No one had done this before. Certainly, shortly after we were doing the voiceovers, someone got the idea to put lips on animals and have them speak. But before that, the, it, was a, it was a huge challenge. And Dwayne, who had an amazing editing background, understood the nuances. And sometimes we'd be on a shot for 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, we'd be running out of film and the cameras because we weren't shooting digital then. And people go, what's going on? And I said, he's just waiting to find that one look that tells the story. And we used to get notes from the studios like, why are you shooting hundreds of thousands of feet of film a day? And it was like, because we haven't found the look yet. And he says, what's the look? I said, Dwayne will know when he finds it. So uh, it was an orchestral kind of group of people that had to really understand. And we had these conversations like, guys, it's just going to take a lot to get this. So look, we all go to the movies. We love movies. The idea is when you go to the movie not to think about any of the technical sides of it, but just know that we put our heart and soul into making this just so that you could sit back and enjoy it. You know, just to that end, if I just want to clarify one thing, what Jeffrey's talking about, patience. We found this, this house out there where the whole cast, everybody went out there, where we, where we dropped off the animals, family drives the, away. The ranch, right? The ranch. And this guy, the first day we met him, I was ecstatic when we saw the place. We had been looking everywhere. 
And I was like, oh, gosh, uh, you know, we got to have this. And Jeffrey's like, calm down. Don't let him know you want it so bad. It's going to cost more money. <laughs> and, and the guy said to us, talking about being patient, he says, I'll let you fellas use my property here, but there's a couple of conditions. No drinking, no swearing, no smoking. And at 5 o'clock every day, my six cows are coming in. You have to stop what you're doing and, and just be silent. Every day, you'd hear those, the clanging of the bells, and you'd, uh, to get a film crew to stop, at that time of day, you're trying to catch up four hours, you fell behind earlier, and you just have to stop and watch these, it was, it was so great, it was a perfect. Did you film it? No, I actually, we never did, it was just, okay guys, stop. <laughs> just yell room tone, and just make everybody stop for a bit. Um, okay, so, you gotta find the animals. Dwayne, Joe, what's the process of casting these animals? Because if you don't have the animals, like you said, if, you, if they can't give you the looks, then it doesn't work. Well, Tammy and Joe, do you all remember the process of finding the animals and casting them? I got my version. I, yeah, I, I think we all have <laughs> versions. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't there for the whole casting, so I don't know. Joe has the stories about about how they cast the dogs. I know the cat was the first thing to be cast, I believe, and Tiki was, was our cat, but she was a rescue cat, and she was very shy. We had, we had her, she would, when we first got her, she would just stay under the bed, never come out, and we'd put food out, and she'd come out and get it whenever somebody would leave, and then eventually she started hanging out in the office, and she would you know, sit around the office in the file cabinets and, and be, be like the office cat. And I think Dwayne walked in and he was like, well, I don't know what we're doing for the dogs, but that's sassy. And we were like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, and and I, was, I was on a film in Hong Kong at the time, and, and it kept being extended before, and I knew I had to get back for prep, and I was like, I'm going to get stuck with Tiki. I'm going to get stuck with... But it was the best thing that could have happened to me because she taught me so much and she turned around and like had her little light bulb moment. And she went on to, after this film, she was on uh, Caroline in the City for five years playing Leah Thompson's cat and, uh, and really had a pretty big career after, you know, as far as being a famous cat. <laughs> Casting the dogs. Well, when we get to the dogs now, Dwayne and I would sit there and try to go over the dogs and look at different dogs, and Dwayne always seemed to kind of drift toward a golden retriever, which is what he had for a dog. I said, Dwayne, why don't you just go ahead and pick what you want here? <laughs> and don't try messing around, just say, I like golden retrievers, and I'll get you a golden retriever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I happened to have the luck of knowing a person that had the perfect golden retriever for the job. Not only was, was he not this beautiful, long-haired dog, he was an old man. Just like in the movie, Old Shadow is an old dog. So we picked him because he filled the role. That was the best thing about the animals. We were so lucky in that when we found the animals, they were, they were real characters themselves. And like certain actors, they fit right into the part. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at first I know Ben w was there and Dwayne is looking at this big old dog and going, what am I going to do with that thing? <laughs> and it turned out Ben was the star. And, he, about and then we picked this, we wanted to pick a young chance. We picked this American Bulldog, which was a new breed at the time. But they're very, very strong for their age. And that's why I picked him. Because we had to have more than just a puppy. We had to have a puppy that would work. And we picked chance from a kennel friend of mine who raised American Bulldogs. And... Uh, we decided we'd give him a shot because he was, although he was young, he was mature for his age. And uh, we were very lucky we just put it together that way. Everything seemed to be falling into place. And uh, of course, when Dwayne said, 
I want that for Sass. I about fell over. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dwayne probably has a different story about how they were cast. It's, it's not that different, but uh, <laughs> it, the details are slightly uh, skewed. Uh, um, but look, Joe is, uh, and Tammy, they explain it like these animals knew what they were doing. The first day I went out there with them, I said, okay, Joe, here's the thing. I'm going to do a wide shot, have the cat lead, go up the hill by that tree there, and, and, and Ben will be right behind, and Rattler behind them. And Joe just looked at me like, what? <laughs> and I went, well, yeah, that's just the wide shot, Joe. Then we'll go in for coverage. <laughs> that's the night before shooting. And then, so, we, so I just want to say, when we picked Chance, Chance, was his real name was Rattler, and we were in a park over in Burbank and looking at hundreds, maybe a thousand different dogs and videotaping them all. And, and Joe's right, we were gonna use a golden retriever for either the old or the young dog. We knew that. And this fireman from San Diego, Joe's friend had come, and I think he had a different dog, but he, he brought this kennel out from his truck. And he opened the gate and this little puppy, like, I don't know, six, seven months old, walked out and I had always told Joe, I said, Joe, when we pick these animals, don't let me shoot myself in the foot when I pick one. And that thing walked out and Joe saw the look on my face. I look at Joe, he shakes his head and I said, yeah, but, and he says, well, you might have just shot a toe off, but I think we can make this work. Now, the and amazing that, thing that's is... that's exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dwayne, you might have shot your left foot off. <laughs> but, but Joe had confidence because he was a puppy. And, and we said, don't, don't teach him to do anything other than sit, stay, know your name. Don't break the puppiness. Then one day we were shooting, and I would usually sit on one side of the camera if I wanted the animal, whichever one it was, to look on a certain side of camera for screen direction. And, and so we sat up on the porch and, and Jean, uh, Kate was leaving the, and left the dogs there and, and Chance is there and he's supposed to go follow her to the gate and then turn around and we didn't know what he'd do after that because uh, it didn't matter what the script said. I, every day with every setup, I just turned to Joe and say, Joe, what, what, what's that animal likely to do? And then you prepare around what it's likely to do and you just go from there. This, this morning, and when you watch the movie, you'll see Chance, he grows. And he was much smaller than Ben. There's another story with Ben. Ben wasn't the first choice either. But um, Chance is small, and as he grew, he grew bigger than Shadow, bigger than Ben. And this one morning, we're sitting there, and I got on the left side of camera, and I said, okay, Joe, here we go. Um, uh, and Joe says, well, what side of camera, where is he supposed to look here? What's the screen direction? I said, over here, I'm on the left. He says, well, if you're on the left, you better go sit on the right. I said, Joe, no, I, I, he's supposed to look at me right here. He says, yeah, I know, but, but you're going to have to sit on the other side of camera if you want that. I said, what's, what's going on? He says, I don't know how to really tell you this, but the dog grew so fast that overnight his skull expanded and he went cross-eyed. <laughs> So, Joe was right. I had to sit on the other side of the camera for him to look on the other side. And he's, so when you watch the movie, when he runs and falls and he runs into trees and he's just kind of looking like, you know, I'm kind of doofy, he can't see. <laughs> and it was the other dog, we, we just very quickly, we, we cast a beautiful golden retriever. I don't remember her name. Molly. Molly. Molly was to be the hero dog. And the night before shooting... Joe came to me and says, again, I don't know how to tell you this, but Molly had something of a little heart attack. <gasps> and he says, you can't use her. Now, now, I have one shot in the whole movie, you see it up here, you used to see, which is binge and shadow. The whole movie is predicated on do you understand the relationship between the boy and the dog when the boy says, I'm going away, but I'll come back, and you stay. And the dog is shaking. Well, that's why we, we, um, we got, why, why Molly was cast. Because Molly, if you showed Molly a bird, she'd just start shaking like this. And I said, that's exactly the look that we need. So that's why she, so now she had a heart attack. And Joe says, we, we can't use her. And I had to plead and say, Joe, could we just do like, when, when we get there in about a month, 
just one shot, Joe. Just one shot. Can we just show her one bird? <laughs> he says, we'll see when we get there. And so, and Joe brought, brought Ben in, and Ben was marvelous. We had a lot of backups that we used occasionally, uh, but boy, all of the animals were sensational. But it was Joe and Tammy, and especially Joe with the dogs, just knowing how they work and and he could interpret what we wanted, and everybody else was like, you know, I remember telling Jean Smart, she's you know, used to TV and the script is just so, and, and it's a breakfast scene, and we're out at the ranch, and, and she's eating her breakfast, and she's supposed to have a bowl of kibble for, for chance, and I said, now Jean, I wanna tell you something. We're gonna start this scene, you're gonna feed the dog and the cat, but, but the little guy, he's outside. He's chasing chickens. And when he comes through that door, I can't guarantee you I know what he's going to do. And she says, no, 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 no. It says right here. It says right. I said, Gene, I said, I said Gene, Gene, I'm telling you something. Hey, your dog can't read that. And, and he doesn't listen to me or Joe. And so we start shooting the scene, and she's calm. She's done this a million times. She's eating her, OK, Shadow, OK, Sassy. And then I say, Okay, bring in Chance. He comes running and hits the screen door at full speed. It <laughs> practically breaks it off the hinges. She's standing there with his bowl of kibble, and he leaps up on her. The kibble goes everywhere. You see it in the movie. You, you couldn't have planned it any better. And then the kibble's everywhere, and he's now like a Hoover uh, <laughs> vacuum cleaner. He's, and, and Shadow's standing back like this. The cat's sneaks back behind the, the sink and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> but that's, we took advantage of what those animals were giving us and it was kind of hairy. <laughs> and I, th and I think the brilliant thing that during the film was that Dwayne and Joe, they shot the rehearsals all the time. You know, it was like we never did it when the when film wasn't rolling on it. So the first reaction, like with Rattler, Sometimes they would get it and you would just like get this magic. I think actually the one, the scene that is in the, the movie where Rattler runs into the tree, he started this thing because he was a puppy. He learned all, all of a sudden, hey, the cat's gonna run, that might be fun to chase. And then it became a timing thing of keeping the cat and the dog, cat for, away from being okay. in front of the dog so he didn't chase it. And so he was running, and he turned around to see where the cat was coming and ran into the tree. <laughs> so, but they, they were shooting it, and, and it ended up in the, in the film, but that wasn't scripted. He was just, they were just supposed to be moving along. <laughs> uh, to add to this about the, the dogs and the cat, um, Dwayne always wanted the cat in the front and then the dogs to follow. And Joe said, we'll try it. Joe knowing it wasn't going to work. <laughs> so we tried it, and the day was moving on, and I went to Dwayne, I said, we're going to have to put the dogs in front and the cat behind. And it worked. And then the next morning, we'd go to work, and Dwayne would say, okay, the cat's in the front this time, <laughs> and the dogs are in the back. And I'm like, you know that's not going to work. And he goes, but let's, just, let's give it another shot. Okay. Dogs in the front now cats in the back. So we had to bend too. The, uh, it all worked out. Um, everyone was always willing to give it the best shot, but we also knew that we, uh, we had to get something every day. And eventually it all just kind of came together. And one of the things that we touched on just briefly, which I think is really important that you get to share with us, is that we had a script, but we knew early on that the script was kind of just a blueprint to tell this story. We knew that the animals were doing things that were great, but it wasn't necessarily written that way in the script. So we went off script <laughs> because the dogs and the cat took us there. And when we got in the editing room, Dwayne really started to figure out the same story, but we got so many wonderful things along the way that when we finally put the movie together, we actually came up with a whole new script telling the same story. So just know that we learned a lot along the way because we were breaking ground 
And Dwayne really brought it home by understanding that he had such wonderful things in there that also told the same story, but made it so much more fun than the script that we had. So just know that what we started with and what we ended up with is the same story, but it's a lot more fun. That's incredible. Well, this is the 30th anniversary, and um, there was actually a sequel a few years later in 96. Um, the cast was a part of it. And um, knowing that <laughs> they didn't have, <laughs> why didn't they ask you, Dwayne? <laughs> um, knowing that uh, y'all came back for the sequel the cast did, and knowing that we're here at the 30th anniversary, uh, would y'all be open to, if they were to say, hey, let's do a third Homeward Bound movie? Like, would y'all be into that? Would y'all be into that? Sounds like some of them want that. Look, if the, if the right story comes along that tells a, a good story like Homeward Bound up, The animals are going to rewrite it, though, is what Jeff Yeah, that's said. right. I guess we don't need a script, right? We just go out and we get a couple animals. See what we get, yeah. Um, look, the, the fact that this movie at 30 years touches the hearts of so many, not just kids, adults, families that grew up with this film, I, I think it's a testament to this kind of storytelling. And I think there's definitely a space for it. Um, in, in the market, so, I mean, hey, I'd be game. <laughs> I, I do have to say, Robert was the anchor. Whenever things got a little crazy, because Robert had to, like, keep the family intact, keep the animals intact. And it was like, Robert, come on, man. You can find a way to get it all together today. I remember the chain around my neck. <laughs> I remember the, uh, I was dragging something heavy. I do have to say, though, that this was such a wonderful experience to do because Jeffrey and Dwayne had a great atmosphere on the set. It was so... I know that it, <laughs> they were tearing their hair out trying to figure out what to do with the dogs, especially with Chance, but uh, who was so goofy. He was so, so goofy, but so fun. But uh, they had a, a wonderful atmosphere that they set, a great tone on the set, which made us all feel really good. And it made us be able to, to do our performances, I thought, a lot better. And bring it together as a family and show that the, you know, the love for the dogs and for the family. So that was really wonderful. The other thing is when, when we would break, you couldn't play with the dogs because you had to and the cats because you had to keep them focused. But every once in a while, Joe would tell us, he'd say, OK. You can have five minutes with them. And then we dive on the ground into the middle of them all and snarfle them and just goof off and play, which was one of the highlights of the whole thing for me because I love, I think all of us do, love the animals so much. But it was, um, it was really a lot of fun. One thing that I heard a story about that my publicist told me was that they had a screening for the, the uh, press before it was released. And uh, it was, maybe it was in in Westwood. Uh, anyway, the, the marketing and PR people were standing outside waiting, you know, <sighs> well, all right, let's see if we can salvage anything out of this, because I don't know, it's just dogs and family, and who cares about that? Let's just hurry and get this thing over with. And so finally, the doors open, and the press came out, and they were all crying. <laughs> and the Disney, Disney the executives of the VP, or the marketing and PR people were going, they hated it. What's wrong? They hated it. And, the, and they said, what, what did you hate about it? And they said, it was so beautiful. And they said, they liked it? Oh, my God. They ran back and said, oh, we've got to do something else about it. We've got to you know, change our campaign. But that, I've had people come up to me, uh, parents, I've had fathers come up to me, screaming and yelling at me, I hate you. I hate your guts. And I said, what? And he said, I've had to watch that film 97 times. <laughs> And then he said, really, I just love it, but, you know, make something else <laughs> quick. Well, some of y'all are going to be watching this film for the first time. I want to say thank you to the cast and crew. Yeah. And my friend Ben Stahl, thank you for putting this thing together. Hey, Benji, take a bow.
Yeah. Those of you who have not seen the movie are in for a Jonathan, treat. Jonathan, Those... Jonathan, I think there yeah. are some other crew oh. members that are here with us. Um, I, mean, I believe the composer, Bruce okay. Groton, is here. Okay. Is he here? If you're here, could you please stand up? Have stand up, yeah. Bruce. Bruce's go. score for the film, fantastic. I think, runs in all of our heads. Yeah. It's just a beautiful, beautiful score. And if they gave 30-year Academy Awards, uh, I would <laughs> hand it to you right now, Bruce. Thank you so much for doing such a wonderful score. I think our AD from the film, Scott Cameron, is here. Is he here? Are you here, Scott? Did he make it? Imagine if he was late and he's the AD. He's the AD. <laughs> I know our wonderful studio teacher who was on both movies, the, both Incredible Journeys movies with us, uh, Lois Sharshevsky is here. Um, Lois. She, she helped create that atmosphere of fun on the set that might have gotten us in trouble a little bit with Joe and Tammy and the animals. But, you know, we shot the movie in the summer, and so we didn't actually have to do a lot of schooling. So the three of us I had to do something for those three hours. So it was a wonderful experience to learn about filmmaking, to learn about the animals. Um, so thank you, Joe and Tammy, and to the rest of the animal trainers that worked on this film. Um, I believe, is, is someone, anyone, is anyone else from the cast and crew here? I want to make sure that... Uh, oh. The office. Awesome, wonderful, wonderful for right. to be here. Thank you so yeah, by much. By the way, for all of you down here, there's a balcony and there are actually people up there. Yeah. So we want to say, hey, folks, thank you for coming. I just, one last thing. I wish we all, we, we just kind of became <clears throat> a family on the movie, everybody, but it was split. We, we shot just with humans, then humans and animals, and then just animals. And I, and I wish the humans would have gotten to go up into the wilderness with us because that was, there, nobody else would agree to this, but I, I wanted desperately to go into the wilderness to get the look, and you'll see it. We got 40 horses for our crew, another 40 horses for our stuff, and we rode up to 11,000 feet, not knowing what we were going to shoot, and Jeffrey all the while, the good thing you got out of cell phone range from the studio because we didn't have a clue what we were going to shoot where. It just knew this was a major commitment. Joe hiked up that whole mountain all the way. I think Ben right beside him. <laughs> but that's a whole other movie in itself. And um, Let's do it. Let's yeah. make it. Let's get a third film up there. Um, but for now, let's enjoy this first one. All right, everybody? Thank you all so much for coming. Yeah, thank you.